This is Dabu7. Talking about the global food supply here is summer and spring had offered us an opportunity to get out there and grow our own food. Going into the winter, a lot of people are going to be leaning heavily on supply chains, on grocery stores, and on farmers. And what we're seeing here is that there is indeed a shortage globally. Now the UN had come out and made these statements here not too long ago saying that the world would face famines of biblical proportion. I'm not so sure that many people caught that or heard that warning that they said. So much news floating around every day and happening, all these alerts and warnings. But this is kind of like the slow kill. Like when I talk about the frog slowly getting cooked and not realizing it. The shelves are becoming barren. And this is happening in many different cities. Now your city may go to the store, may look fine, but I'm telling you, from the feedback that I get from all across the world, People are telling me they're walking in stores in their hometowns, and it doesn't make sense why some of the shelves are cleared out when there's no rush, there's no massive lines, and you have these big corporations saying that they're stockpiling, like your Walmarts and your Kroger's. But yet you walk into the store, some of the shelves are empty, and they're limiting items, and yet there's no rush on items. Other places seem to be moving along just fine. It just seems to me that the bigger corporations are going along with this whole thing globally, step by step, even when it comes down to rationing food. As I had said many times before, I feel like we're still in beta mode with all these beta tests happening here throughout this whole thing. One area that I want to point out is South America. They're now saying that from Mexico City all the way down to the southern tip of South America, there are food shortages. With obviously the poorest areas getting hit the hardest. So this is pretty widespread and you know we can be affected by this big time here in America as well. And it can creep up on us out of nowhere as the dollar loses buying power and becomes weaker and food becomes more scarce and the price naturally starts to inflate. There's going to be a crossroad between the two where the dollar is coming down and the prices of food are going up and it's going to catch people off guard. So, once again, if you don't have a plan out there for food storage, please get one. Whether it's freeze-dried food to get you six months, or you're making a garden, a greenhouse, to get you the winter. Something's got to be done from here. You cannot be just depending on these grocery chains. So, show some support to your local farmers. That will go a long way, that's for sure, and it'll help keep them in business and help keep you with fresh food in town. I'll leave a link and I'm going to break this down further on the... Shalom. Start out by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashem Yasha, Bashem Rakadash. Salutation to the elders and apostle GMS groups so and ones alike, teacher and percent truth. Shalom and brachathum to them. Double honors to the elders and apostle GMS groups so and ones alike, teacher and percent truth. Shalom and brachathum. The foremost give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahshua by Shem Rakadash. That was a Dabu, um, a Dabu 7 video relating to global um, famine, the pandemic, potentially. I'm going to read some uh, scriptures relating to the 2nd Ezra um, 16. I'm going to read one in the um, 2nd Ezra 15. The 2nd sec Ezra 16 and 18. The beginnings of sorrows and great mourning. The beginnings of famine and great death. The beginnings of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginnings of evils. And that's where we're in. Famines are part of beginnings of evils, man. We in times of evil, potentially very perilous times. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Number 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation, anguish, are sent as scourges for the amendment. Scourges is a tool used to implement punishment. And these are different, these are just a few examples of those scourges. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, 
more be always always mindful of the scourges. So even when these things are happening, obviously right in front of their face, they're going to still continue on doing what they do, whatever that is. In this most case, you know, being worldly and wicked, man. So the point is, man, they're not paying attention to obvious signs that's right in front of them, things that's happening right in front of their face. You know, they're blinded from the obvious. Behold, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon the earth, that they shall think of themselves to be in a good case. We'll stop it there. So, basically, they're going to underestimate and thinking because certain things may not be happening in a certain way, they're going to be, um, they're going to be believed to be, you know, we must be okay or trying to get back to a, a sense of so-called normal. But in First Thessalonians five and two, as they, um, as um, uh, as they say, peace and sudden destruction comes. You know, I mean, so some certain things are going to come unaware, obvious but unaware, and it's going to catch them by surprise. I'm going to read that again. Behold, victuals shall be, so victuals like um, pretty much supplies and different things, shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case. Even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So when they think they're somewhat in a good case, all these things are going to be multiplied and doubling up. Such as the sword, the famine, and different things. Number 22. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and in the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And that's pretty much things that's pretty much inevitable, that can't be avoided, and pretty much are inescapable. You can't escape these things. So if you escape one, you're going to have to deal with another. And the dead shall cast out as dung, which is crap. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. And that's what's going to happen. Desolation, destruction, death, destruction, desolation. You know, death in the streets, man. People are going to literally be falling in the streets, man, dying. You know what I mean? So, these are the evils. These relates to the perilous times. These relates to... Um, in this chapter, uh, the horrors in the last days. And these are examples of such of the horrors that's going to be happening. Example of the horrors that's going to be happening in the latter times or the last days. Let's go to Second Ezra, Psalm um, 1558. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. And eat their own flesh. Cannibalism. That was happening in the ancient times. That's going to happen again. Because when there's going to be a famine of, of food. People are going, to, are going to pretty much go ballistic and nuts. And they're going to do some strange and weird things. And part of that is going to be cannibalism. Let me read that again. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. And eat their own flesh. And drink their own blood for very hunger of bread which is lack of food and thirst of water there's going to be a lack of water and these are examples of that cannibalism with that famine of food equals cannibalism so these are the things that's going to come upon Let me go to uh, first the Thessalonians um, Six twenty one. Because many people think this is a fairy tale. They think these things are not going to actually happen, man. They don't believe these things are going to happen. They think it's a. They think this this.
book is a fairy tale. They think the Bible is a, bear, a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. It's going to be, it sounds like a movie. It's going to be a reality. I'm going to start with First the Thessalonians. Um, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna catch them off guard, man. Is going to catch them when they least expect it, man. Because they're not they're not expecting certain things, man. You know, I mean, even when certain things are uh, obvious, that's happening. They're going to still re resume in their mode of um, their day to day lives. You know, what I mean, and even when the certain things are obviously changing right in front of them, they're going to still, you know. They're, they're pretty much blinded. You know, they're blinded. They're just blinded. You know, they just not see it. Um, this was just a few verses um, um, relating to that video, that Dabu video, um, the global pand, um, that global potential pandemic relating to global famine. But they're not talking about that. You know what I mean? These news agencies and all that, they talk about a whole lot of foolishness, man. Things that's really irrelevant. But the real important things that's going on behind the scenes, they're not covering. For obvious reasons. But that being said, I hope this helps someone, you know. Um, um, give all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Bashem, Rakadesh, the water shall want. Thanks.